Well, happy Friday everyone. I hope you're doing well and I've had a good week. As you're watching this, uh, the reality is, having pre-recorded this, I am actually on the road on my way to Winnipeg, Manitoba for the YouTube Creators Meet and Greet, which is happening tomorrow at St. Patel's Park in Winnipeg, Manitoba from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. with a potluck lunch at 12 noon. Now, kind of late notice for any of you that have to drive any great distance, but if you live within an hour, a couple hours of Winnipeg, you could still make it. So, hope to see you there. For those of you that can't make it, well, I'm sorry. You should uh, check around, though, and see if there might be an event happening in your area. I know towards the end of August, uh, around the 27th, 28th, don't quote me on that, there is going to be a YouTube Creators Meet and Greet near Elko, Nevada. Uh, something Reservoir, I can't remember the name of it now, but if you go to Doing Redneck Things Off Grid, Tony and Leanne's channel, you can get more information about that meet and greet for Nevada. So if you live down in the Nevada, Eastern California, Arizona, you know, that area, you might want to check that one out and attend it. All right, on to today's interesting little bit of History? Or is it history? Hmm. Let's have a look and see what I'm talking about. Maybe I should leaf well enough alone. Leif Erikson lived in Greenland until about AD 1000, and then followed a family tradition of escaping west and discovering new lands. Years before, his grandfather had hightailed it from Norway to Iceland after running into trouble over some killings and Leif's father, Eric the Red, had to leave Iceland quickly after killing a man with a shovel. He sailed west, discovering and settling in Greenland. But Leif was a little different than the rest of his clan. For a Viking, he was generally a peaceful guy. And he headed west because he wanted to, looking for a place that had better timber and other luxuries not found in the barren Greenland. He consulted with Norse seaman Bjorn Herr Julsen, who reported sighting land west of Greenland. Technically, this would make Bjorn, not Leif, the first known European to discover America. But unadventurous, Bjorn never landed and instead sold his ship to Leif. Leif raised a crew, sailed west, and found not one land, but three. First was Haliland, or translated, land of flat stones perhaps modern-day Baffin Island, which he determined to be too much like the place he'd left, and therefore not worth colonizing. He pushed on and found a place that he called Markland, or forest land in English, possibly Labrador? This looked a bit better, but Leif still hoped to find something more promising just around the next peninsula. Sure enough, two days later, he hit Paydirt. According to his account, his third landfall had streams filled with salmon, green grass year-round, meadows, and grapevines that led Leif to name it Vinland, or Wineland in English. But there were catches to this heavenly Valhalla that ensured his attempt to found a colony there would end in failure. First of all, Leif and his men had some trouble with the locals, whom they referred to with the all-purpose term skralings, which means uncivilized foreigners. It's kind of funny, they're calling the natives of the land foreigners, and they're the ones that are coming in. But anyway, the name they'd also given the indigenous people of Greenland. But more important, the Norse settlers who followed Leif to Vinland turned out to be the area's true uncivilized foreigners and spent a lot of time fighting with each other. After several years of squabbling, things reached a boiling point when Leif's sister, Fridus, arrived in Vinland with her own group from Iceland. She, too, attacked the local tribes and then turned on the colonists themselves. Freitas followed her family's killing ways and goaded one group of colonists into murdering several others because she believed they had insulted her in a dispute over sailing ships. Shortly after that, the Norse abandoned the settlement altogether and headed back to Iceland. Vinland was all but forgotten, even after Christopher Columbus revived interest in a new world. 
Into the mid-twentieth century, Leif Erikson's voyages remained mired in the hazy realm of doubt and speculation. Italians hinted that the whole thing was a fabrication, made up by Icelanders over a few cups of mead. Others argued that Viking seamen could have reached North America's mainland, but there was no evidence they actually did. Those naysayers pointed out that the Viking sagas, which included mention of arriving in North America, were just adventure stories, not sailing directions. Leif's voyages couldn't, and still can't, be replicated with any veracity. From time to time, though, amateur archaeologists and the occasional con man came forward with claims of physical evidence. In the late 1800s, a stone carved with Scandinavian runes turned up in Minnesota, purportedly describing a massacre of ten men on the site in 1362. But most authorities judged it to be a fake. In 1930, an iron sword and spearhead were found near Beardmore, Ontario. The Royal Ontario Museum bought them for $500, a huge amount during the Great Depression, and proudly put them on display. Alas, the story that their discovery turned out to be a hoax, the relics, although apparently genuine, had been imported from Scandinavia in the early 1920s. So the museum withdrew them from public view. They were quickly placed back on exhibit in the 1990s with the inscription explaining the hoax was actually a piece of Ontario history. In 1957, a genuine 11th century Norwegian penny showed up in Maine, but again under suspicious circumstances and without any additional supporting context. And in 1958, Yale University in Connecticut fell for an expensive and embarrassing hoax when it published the Vinland map worth about $300,000, which supposedly showed Vinland and was drawn a few decades before Columbus. Most experts believe it's a fake. In this context, you can imagine the widespread, yeah right, reaction in 1960 when a Norwegian husband and wife team announced that they had found an ancient Norse settlement in Newfoundland. Archaeologists Anne Stein, Ingrid, and Helge Ingrid had made a thorough study of the sagas and old maps. In 1960, they began digging at Lance a Meadow at the northern tip of Newfoundland. There, they found traces of an ancient settlement. Over the next eight years, the pair led an international team from Canada, Iceland, Norway, and the United States in excavating sod houses, cooking pits, a metal forge, and boathouses. The remains of a Norse settlement dating back to the early thousands. With that discovery, Ingstad and Helge finally proved that the Vikings had in fact reached and briefly settled North America, just as the sagas had claimed. But one puzzle remains. Grapes, Vindbur in Old Norse, do not grow wild in Newfoundland. So why did Leif name it Vinland? Well, here's some theories. Although grapes don't grow there, wild berries do, and were suitable for winemaking. Could he have meant those? The settlement in Las Amedos may have been only a base camp, with Vinland being further south. After all, French explorer Jacques Cartier, who claimed Canada for France, found grapes growing wild south of the St. Lawrence River. And some reputable Icelandic scholars have claimed that the Vikings traveled down the coast as far south as Manhattan before turning back. Another theory holds that the climate was warmer then. Another theory holds that the climate was warmer then. And perhaps grapes did grow wild in northern Newfoundland during the 11th century. Support for this idea is indirect. But... Grapes have now been successfully established at Gambo, Newfoundland. They started growing them there in 2002. Finally, experts in the Old Norse language recently theorized that we've been misled all along by the name Vinland. According to this theory, the Vin part may come from a different Old Norse pronunciation that means meadow. As its modern name suggests, meadows are not at all hard to find around the town of Las Almedos. So there you have it. Interesting. 
And indeed, you can go to Newfoundland today and see the old Viking settlement there. Remains of the archaeological dig, which are now preserved for the public to see. Hope you've enjoyed that little bit of uh, history. All right. Now that we've heard about Vinland, whether it means Wineland or Meadowland, your guess is as good as mine, but let's move on. I expect that you probably are tired of listening to me babble on and would like to hear a groaner. All right, let's have a groaner. Well, after a uh, boisterous amateur game, the men from one team gathered in the locker room, you know, as they do, to shower and change and that, and they were all suddenly startled by the sound of a cell phone ringing. And a gentleman amongst the group picked up the cell phone that was ringing, which was lying on the bench by him, put it on speakerphone and answered. And the conversation went as follows. Man. Hello? Woman. Honey, it's me. Are you at the gym? Man. Yes. Woman. I'm at the mall now, and I found this beautiful dress. It's only $1,500. I really like it. Can I buy it? Man. Sure, go ahead, if you like it that much. Woman. I also stopped by the Audi dealership and saw the new models. I saw one that's just perfect. Man. How much? Woman. $60,000. Man. Okay, but for that price, I want it with all the extras. Woman. Great! Oh, and one more thing. The house we wanted last year is back on the market. They're asking $950,000. Man. Well, then go ahead and make a bid, but just offer 900000 and negotiate from there. Woman. Okay, I'll see you later. Love you. Man. Bye. Love you, too. The man hangs up the phone. The other men in the locker room are looking at him in astonishment. He then smiles and says... Does anyone know whose phone this is? <laughs> I don't know, but somebody's in for a surprise. Alrighty, I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, little video and a little bit about Leif Erikson and Vinland. And uh, if you listen in on a conversation with somebody on the cell phone, you might want to make sure it's their cell phone before you <laughs> get too excited about their lifestyle. Alrighty. We'll see you sometime next week. I'll uh, be putting up a few videos of the meet and greet tomorrow. I won't be putting them up tomorrow. The meet and greet is tomorrow. I'll be putting up some videos of it next week. And uh, we'll also see you on Tuesday for Tuesdays with the Pilgrim. Until then, take care, stay safe, and God bless.